So we have here um, this after this afternoon we have the family of Shali Tilson. Many of you all have become aware that the autopsy uh, has been released of Shali Tilson. And I think what's critically important in the autopsy is we, as we have reviewed that autopsy from the Georgia Bureau of Investigation is that Mr. Tilson died of complications from se severe dehydration. Um, he, what ultimately happened, and, and we have a, a medical expert that we're consulting with, but what ultimately happened is due to the severe di dehydration in his body, blood clots formed in his lungs which led to his death. And it is our understanding that in order for that level of dehydration, it would have, would have to occur over a, at least a three day period. And for three days, um, Mr. Tilson would not have had any water, any fluids, which led to the blood clots forming in his lungs and ultimately to his death. In addition to that, there was bleeding on the back of, of his brain um, from what looked like or what is described as a bruise to the front of his head. Uh, how that bruise came about, we are still not clear, but he had bleeding, um, again, hemorrhaging um, on his brain in addition to the severe dehydration. And then the third factor that we have obviously been very concerned about was that there were six use of force um, files made in the nine days that he was in the jail. What that indicates to us is that there was an issue with Mr. Tilson as it relates perhaps to a mental health crisis and that instead of responding with um, by providing medical support uh, mental health support, he was locked in a cell by himself and left there essentially to die. And so we believe that this is about neglect, um, about a denial of, of proper medical treatment, and that this family, based on reading that autopsy report, um, has asked the community for support, and that on next Saturday, June the 9th, there will be a march here in Rockdale County um, calling for justice for Shali, but also um, now we have the death of Jamie Henry that clearly something is going on in this jail that the citizens of Rockdale County should be alarmed and concerned about. When you have deaths and we have witnesses, um, even as it relates to Miss Henry, that she was banging and yelling for help and was in need of medical treatment and was asking and begging for medical treatment um, but to no avail she was also left um, unfortunately to die and she passed away on early Sunday morning and so with those two losses of life we believe that there is a need for the citizens of Rockdale County and just for from Georgia in general uh, to come together and to stand with these families, to stand with these citizens and say enough is enough, that we need answers, that the people that are responsible for the jail have to be held accountable. And as of now, um, there has been no accountability, uh, even with the autopsy release, and we know that he died of dehydration, the very person who was in charge of the jail when Shali Tilson passed, was the very person who went to their home to deliver the news that their daughter passed. So the person who was responsible for the daily operations of the jail is still in place and still going to deliver news to family members and saying, your loved one has perished in our jail that I am responsible for. And so with that, um, we want to invite up the organizations that are present um, to make a statement and um, and to support and stand in solidarity with what is coming forward on this Saturday at 3 p.m. on uh, on June the 9th. So I'll, I'll start with uh, Brother Brantley from the uh, Rockdale County of 
branch of the NAACP, and then he'll be followed uh, by Tiffany Williams Roberts from the Southern Center for Human Rights. They do tremendous work around uh, prison and jail conditions. Um, and then we'll follow with uh, New Order, um, SCLC, Ms. Josie Dean, um, and any other of the activists that are here to support. Um, we invite them to uh, make a statement in, in support and solidarity with these families. So thank you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, first of all, I want to send my condolences out to the family, to both families. I just met the family today, and I was before. Um, like I said before, my first press conference is that uh, when I found out what happened, and Mrs. Davis, we got together to me out there. I was waiting for this report to come out right here. This is the GBI report, okay, for the for this, um, Tilson family. On this GBI report right here that I have in my hands right now, there are several questions that needs to be answered. One, it's the biggest question that needs to be answered is, why was this young man shackled down? Two, Another report is the dehydration. Why was this young man dehydrated for such a long period of time? Um, three, what was he firstly from the Conyers PD, and I think this is very, very important and people have to realize this, is from the Conyers PD, the body camera. Um, I've always asked, I've uh, requested uh, for Chief Wilson to send me over the body cam from the arrest. Uh, Chief Wilson's response was when the GBI gets the body cam, um, we'll sit down and we'll talk about it. But yes, there's definitely a concern with this jail. The citizens of Rockdale County are very, very concerned and very, very disturbed what's going on. As a community leader, I'm very disturbed what's going on. So, and with the new death that's happening, this should not be happening at this jail facility. Now, again, let me make this very, very clear. There are a lot of questions that these families need to have answers for, okay? The GBI report is out, and we're gonna do our due diligence to get answers for this family. And if who is in fault of this, as a leader of this community, we're gonna be asking the DA to press charges to the fullest of the law for both families. But the first thing was first, is that we needed to have the autopsy report first. Now we have the autopsy reports, now the questions need to be answered, and whoever is responsible for these both of these people's deaths needs to be um, pressed fully to the law. And that's what we're requesting that justice be served for both families. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Tiffany Roberts, and I am Community Engagement and Movement Building Council for Southern Center for Human Rights. I'm here today on behalf of the Southern Center to stand in solidarity with the families um, who have been affected by these incidents. We believe that medical care and humane treatment are human rights. And in any case where uh, jails who are charged with the custody of incarcerated people fail to provide basic human rights, someone has to be held responsible. Any time that a mother has to grieve her child, for a misdemeanor offense for which he probably should have been released, someone has to be held accountable and systems have to change. To not give water to an inmate seems to be the most basic denial and it is a horrific, it is a horrific event. And so now we're asking for the community to join with this family. Even if you are tired of marching, the flyer says that we are gathering because we are gathering to affirm the humanity of those we have lost. And we are also gathering to affirm the humanity of those who are left to fight. So on Saturday the 9th of June, we're asking for the community to come out to support this family, but also to ensure that this doesn't happen again. We shouldn't have two deaths in the custody of one jailer in 10 years, let alone one year, let alone three months. So thank you very much for those of you who, who will continue to support this family and the organizations. Excuse me. My name is Leonard Jones. I'm the national spokesperson for New Order National Human Rights Organization. It is a shame and a disgrace that these deaths have occurred at the Rockdale County Jail. Osbitt, Washington, and Williams, you will not be there if you do not get involved. This is a shame in Rockdale County that misdemeanors are turning into deaths because you have neglected to perform your duties. 
we would like to work with you, but you haven't even come to these families and let them know what happened to their loved ones. This cannot continue to happen. Like my sister here said, yet alone 10 years should these deaths occur, but within a couple of months, a couple of days, what's enough? We know what needs to be done. Someone needs to be removed until these issues have been resolved. Do your best. We will continue to support these families and do whatever we can as an organization to assist you. But you must come forward and claim responsibility for what has happened and dedicate yourselves to resolving these issues. Thank you. From the National Action Network, we're here to give y'all our support. Everybody said no justice. Justice. No, justice. no peace. No, no peace. peace. We won't be satisfied until we find justice. Thank you, sir. Let me say thank you again for coming out. I am the mother of Michael Maddox. My son was murdered uh, 26 years ago. I've been on this battlefield a long time. This is a horrific event that has taken place. And it is totally unacceptable. Someone needs to ask questions. And we as grieving mothers have to speak for our loved ones that has been murdered, whether they was murdered on the streets or murdered in the jail or wherever, whether it's stoic in front of a television camera or an emotional wreck at their funerals. Someone has to step up and take responsibility for what has happened. And we, as an organization of mothers, will not stand down. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. The Rockdale County facility has failed two young people. The community is not going to fail these children. The community is not going to fail these mothers. We're asking that the community, let their voices be heard and let their voices be heard loud, let their voices be heard now. We have a responsibility to look out for the children men and women in our community, and that's why we are here. They have a responsibility. When they take a young person into their custody, they have the responsibility of returning that child, that young man, that woman, back to the community in the same physical state Amen. that they were in before they went into the system. Amen. That's right. That's right. There is responsibility yeah. here, and we demand that that responsibility is taken Seriously, Seriously, and take a now. A change must take place. The chief jailer in this system must be replaced, and she needs to be replaced now. We want justice for the family. I don't want to come to another event in Rockdale County where another child, another woman, another man has been failed. My heart goes out to you, and we want you to come out and give support on the night for these families. We want justice in Rockdale County now. How you doing? I'm Josie. I'm Daniel, a black man never get in Rockdale County think tank. I'm personally upset today because I talked to the sheriff, living myself, and I called him and asked him when it first happened, what happened? Let me know. Bring it to the citizen. Let's have a press conference and talk to the citizen. So he said he was waiting on the paperwork. I let him wait on the paperwork. I have not heard nothing else. And I said, now, a second death, now the first one, you had an excuse. There's no excuse anymore. So we're going to have to cry out loud. And I say this right here, I didn't get this black man never forget from Martin Luther King for nothing. I have been all over the country fighting for our people. And I told God I'm tired of keep fighting and our people won't stand up and fight for themselves. Amen. I say, so today, we must fight Rockdale County. It's not just Josie Dean. We got to fight for what's right. And something ain't right in that jail. They got police running rapping all over America. Right. And then it happened in our own backyard. We don't have an excuse no more. So I That's say right. today, we're going to cry loud and spell now that we're going to tell Bella her crane graces up in that jail. Something is going definitely wrong up in that jail. And it starts with the head. If the head is wrong, the whole body is wrong. Amen. So if the head get right, Amen. the whole Amen. body going to get right. So it's time to uh, rock their account and step up to the plate and stop playing. Y'all be blue. Thank you. We have, um, I'm Garvin Haynes, and I've already put my thoughts in the paper, in the comment section.
concerning Mrs. Henry's death. But I echo everything that's been said, and that is point blank. The citizens of this county ought to be in total outrage. And the responsibility is not just with the jailer, it is with the sheriff. It is at the head. And we should be ashamed as citizens of this county to have this happen. This has not happened in the past. And it should never happen again. And I will say again, if you have family members or friends in this jailhouse, you need to come and visit yes. them on a regular basis yes. until this is solved. Their life is in danger. That is all there is to it. And I pray that these two families get the justice they deserve. And those that are and should be held accountable or taken to the full and just limits of the law. And that someone will step up and run for office and fix this problem. And my name is Garvin Haynes, and this is not a racial problem. This is a biracial problem. Because it doesn't matter what race you are when you come to jail, as the man said, you should be able to leave the jailhouse alive. Again, good evening. My name is Donald Ferguson, and my condolences go out to the two families. But the truth of the matter is, is that these two deaths in the Rock Hill County facility are not the only two deaths that has happened in the Rock Hill County jail um, detention annex. There has been um, several deaths in the past, and that at one point, and I'm not certain of the particular uh, years prior to this particular occurrence, but there was a, a gentleman that passed away within the facility itself on just on a mere nosebleed, and he did not get the proper medical attention in that particular facility. Uh, again, I believe that an outside entity such as the GBI or the FBI needs to come in and investigate the Rockdale County Sheriff's Department. That is my suggestion to the community as a resident here and also as a candidate for sheriff of Rockdale. There needs to be an outside investigation on Rockdale County Sheriff's Department. Thank you so much. We have, um, speaking on behalf of the family, Shali's sister, Diamond, uh, Tilson. Good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Diamond Tilson. I'm Shali Tilson's sister. Um, I want to thank everyone for coming out, all the activists and everyone in the community who came to support us. Of course, we all know we're standing in front of the very last place my brother was alive. Um, he was sent here, um, and when I found out he was here, um, I, uh, I assumed that he was going to be safe. I assumed that he was going to be well taken care of, and that's not what happened when he got here. His death was preventable. Jamie Henry's death was preventable. And I want the community to come out and, you know, support us. June 9th, we're having a march. June 9th, we're having a march for Shali Tilson. And I want the community to come out and show support because we need to put an end to this. We need to put an end to this negligence. Um, Jamie Henry had a son, or has a son, that is five years old. And he should not be going through this right now. My little sister shouldn't be going through this. My mother shouldn't be going through this. Being sent to jail shouldn't mean that you're being sent to die. You should walk out of this jail alive. And this should not have happened. This shouldn't happen to anyone. We, um, some of the community organizers um, and the organizations that um, are part of this effort include the Southern Center for Human Rights, the New Order Human Rights Organization, the Rockdale County NAACP, the Georgia State Conference of the NAACP, Save Ourselves, Sankofa UCC, the DeKalb SCLC, and as you can see, there are others that will be added to this growing list of organizations who will lead the march on March the 9th uh, at 3 p.m. 
and it will be it, the march will begin at the Pine Log Park. Excuse me, June 9th. June 9th um, at 3 p.m. It will begin at Pine Log Park, and they will march here to the Rockdale County Jail. Um, they've also um, the organizers, and I can let them speak for themselves. Have also identified who the chief jailer is, which is Nikki Weathersby. Um, and under um, her watch, there have been two deaths in the last three months. And so the concern is that um, these deaths have happened and nothing has changed. And um, we still have seen no change. But I believe that the will of the community, and I believe in the will of the people, um, and I believe in that over the law. Because I believe the will of the people um, is, is grounded in the will of God. And I believe, and I know this doesn't sound like what a lawyer says, but I believe in the power of the people. And then their continued um, will and strength and willingness to continue to fight. And we're going to fight with these families every step of the way, with these organizations. We thank them for coming and being supportive. Uh, we have been in contact, an organization from North Carolina has contacted the family. They will be traveling. A group will be traveling from North Carolina. Uh, to support this and, and it's our hope that this is a national march that people from all over the country come to Rockdale County to support the citizens of Rockdale County and these, and these families and what they're going through and these mothers. Um, this is nature in reverse. A mother should never have to uh, bury their child. And this is why this is um, such a, a powerful, important moment for us to have this march on June the 9th at 3 p.m. So I'll, I'll take a few questions. Um, Mom is not going to take any questions today, um, but you can ask questions of any of the organizers um, or, or myself or, um, or Donnie. What needs to happen, Melanie? We have to see some change for all of the same people, all of the same players to remain in place after um, Shali's death after the release of the autopsy. So we want to be fair, right? We want to be fair. We wanted to say we had to wait until the autopsy was released. That's what everybody, that's what the NAACP wanted. They said, well, we want to see what the autopsy says. Now they see what the autopsy says, and they're standing ten toes down, unwavering about something has to happen. And so once the autopsy was released, in my spirit, in my heart, my belief was that we would start hearing about change that was happening in the jail and we have heard nothing. And so that change starts with who's responsible for the daily operations of this jail? Who's responsible? It starts obviously with the sheriff, but then he has someone that is supposed to be taking care of what goes on in the jail. And then you have on this Sunday, a woman who is yelling, begging for medical attention, saying that she's in need of help. And instead of providing help, they leave her to die as they left Shali Tilson to die. So at what point does someone step up and say there has to be a, a change and it has to be swift, it has to be clear, and a message has to be sent that if you are working in this jail, you're responsible for human beings. You're responsible for human beings. Yes. I'm sorry, turn this. How, uh, do you know how often uh, the checks are supposed to be made? And, and can you tell us whether or not uh, both people were in the same situation where they were in cells alone, in a cell alone? We know that at one point, Jamie Henry had a, um, a cellmate. It's our understanding that when she began to cry out for help, she was moved mm -hmm. to another location and isolated as well. So we, we believe that based on all of the reports we've received, is the, the strategy is if there's an unruly um, inmate, regardless of what causes their unruliness. In the, in the case of Shali Tilson, we believe that he was having a mental health crisis. And that we all know that if you're having a mental health crisis, being placed in isolation is not the remedy. Instead, the remedy is for you to see a mental health expert. And so that's the information we've been able to gather so far. Uh, and that's why uh, this is so outrageous from uh, the family standpoint, is that this practice of continuing to isolate people. We believe that uh, Ms. Henry was had a, a medical crisis. Um, she was 
admitted very clearly that she had a drug addiction and that she could not, she needed help, she needed medical attention. And unfortunately, um, no one seemed to understand the gravity of when you have that kind of addiction, what needs to happen. But there are some very clear guidelines as to when someone is having these kinds of crises, how you are to intervene and save lives. And instead, they allow these lives to um, be taken. Attorney Davis, Maria Boynton, V103 Atlanta, Georgia. We are live here and the world is watching right now. What is it that everybody watching can do? I mean, we've been following your story now for quite a while. What type of support do you and the families need to make action occur? The family, these organizers, just want as many people as possible to come out on June the 9th, next Saturday at 3 p.m. It's important that the Rockdale County citizens know that they are not in this fight alone, that what happens in Rockdale County happens to all of us throughout the state of Georgia, throughout this country. And so, again, at 3 p.m., we want people to join us at the Pine, okay. Pine Log Park. Pine Log Park. It'll be about a mile and a half march, uh, but we've marched before. And many times we've marched in the city of Atlanta because someone has been shot in Minnesota or someone has been strangled in New York. But it is, this has happened here in Georgia. And so we're asking people to come out um, to march, to let their voices be heard. And I know there's some additional... Come in peace. Come in peace, come in peace. absolutely. Yes. This, is a, this is a peaceful, nonviolent march. Um, additionally, we ask uh, there, these organizers, I know we'll be convening um, at some later point with additional things that you can do in terms of contacting the sheriff and what have you. So um, you can wait to listen from what we believe is a coalition that is uh, emerging around this issue um, so that we know that no one organization can address what is happening here. We know that no one family uh, can address what's happening, but it has to be a collective effort. So we really appreciate them uh, coming in collaboration uh, and working together. And as we close out, what exactly do you all feel is going on at the Rockdale County, Georgia jail? Neglect. Criminal neglect. neglect. Criminal neglect. Criminal neglect. That someone is allowing sick people to die in the jail is criminal. That's criminal. But those who want to share the information, would that also be helpful about the knife? Absolutely. If you would share out um, the information, um, the families will be there. They'll they'll march. They'll stand. Um, they're not running from this. These both of these families, I've had a chance to spend some time with, and they're both just saying they're going to fight to the end for justice for their for their child. It's a child that has been lost. Dennis Barr, Hip Hop and Choir Magazine. You present this uh, the evidence that you have to the district attorney. Have you received any feedback from the district attorney of Rockdale County? Our next step is to meet with the district attorney. Absolutely. That is our next step. Um, each family um, independently will, will go and have an opportunity to meet with the DA um, to go over what, um, when we look in, in, in all of the law books, what is, what is manslaughter? Um, what is doing something that is lawful that leads to someone's death or failing to do something when you know you have a responsibility to. Um, it would be different if uh, Mr. Tilson, for example, uh, was able to walk freely and, and go get water and he chose not to go get water. But he is in custody. He is at the mercy of this jail. And that is what uh, people have to distinguish. To, to suffer from severe dehydration has to be the responsibility of those who have him in custody. What did Period. the sheriff say? What, what? They have said, they have, well, the first statement that was made was that he died of natural causes. And I say, and I want to make this very clear, and we're not going to try this out here, but I'll make this very clear. Dying of dehydration is not natural causes That's for a 22-year-old. Right. That's, right. That's absurd. And to make that statement is shameful. That's this is right. not natural causes. The, the autopsy report shows that it's not natural causes. And because of that, someone should have long been gone from this jail. And it's cruel. Yes. And it is cruel. The, the level of suffering that someone has to endure is it's hard for me to even repeat in the presence of his family mm -hmm. what kind of pain he had to have gone through over those days that it took for him to die in this manner.
You talked about um, multiple use of force reports uh, and also shackling that, yes. that led you to believe that mental illness, that some sort of mental health episode was, was occurring. Um, is there is there anything more you can say about that? Anything we were we were that? informed that um, he did have uh, mental health history, but he was he was treating it through counseling. Um, his family, they they were able. It was manageable. Um, but as we know, under certain stressful situations, that could trigger things. And so we believe that um, his arrest and then his incarceration triggered a, um, a mental health episode. Um, there in the inside of the autopsy report, it indicates that he was attempting to climb the walls. So that would indicate that he was having a complete breakdown and they were supposed to be checking every 15 minutes and if you're checking every 15 minutes, then how does someone die of severe dehydration? Have you seen any indication of there being a, a, a staffing issue specifically at this jail? We, we have not. We have not been told that they were understaffed. Uh, we haven't received any of that information as to any explanation as to why uh, something like this would happen. Everybody. The next Everybody. question I have is for the uh, gentleman running for sheriff. Yes, sir. Can you step up? Yes, sir. You ran for sheriff uh, years ago. I did. What has happened over the period of time to, to make you want to run again? Well, um, I basically served for the, in, in terms of the, the, um, the community. I served the, the leisure of the citizens. The citizens of Rockdale County actually run the sheriff department. And the sheriff actually uh, works in conjunction of, of the quality of life for the citizens of the community, but also there are particular programs that these inmates you know, have, and there's a quality of life that they have in terms of making sure that they're secure and safe. Uh, I'm a retired 25-year uh, captain for County Sheriff Department, but also I was agency accreditation manager, and I was the commander of policy procedures, which I ensured that the policies for the Sheriff's Office uh, in terms of the jail division under the uh, American Correctional Association, there are particular standards that uh, personnel have to comply with. And one of the standards, uh, attorney, um, uh, did mention was that as far as a person being in isolation, there has to be 15 minute rounds and uh, that particular individual that's male or female uh, inmate that's uh, in those particular isolated areas had to be treated. Uh, in addition to that, if they're not in a uh, isolated uh, uh, cell, then the rounds are every 30 minutes. But there are particular policy procedures that they have to comply with. Even uh, when an inmate comes in the facility, they have to go through a, uh, a medical assessment, it, depending on whether or not they have any medical issues or you know mental or health issues, and they have to be treated for that. There are some loopholes in this particular incident. Uh, like I said before, there are previous infractions that have occurred in that facility other than these two incidents that, uh, that are recent. And so there needs to be an outside investigation as it relates to that. Uh, I would talk to the attorney because um, what needs to happen is an open record request on the particular standards and procedures for that particular jail division and then you and then also the, the uh, security laws need to be pulled to see whether or not who made those security rounds and how frequent those security rounds were made. Yeah. And so um, I would I would pretty much hold my, my comments at this time but uh, again I do plan on running for sheriff in 2020 but the most important thing is to serve as the leadership uh, of the community. And that's what I'll do is serve, you know, uh, in, the, in the behalf of the community of Rockdale County. Who are you? My name is Donald Ferguson. What bodies or agencies have the, have the authority to, to conduct a, an investigation like this? Um, the GBI and also the FBI, they can have an external investigation on this, on this particular agency if they choose that there are some particular infractions that uh, calls for that. And that's what you would be requesting? from either um, of those bodies. Yes, it, it needs to happen. An internal investigation needs to happen in Rockdale County Sheriff's So Department. Attorney Marilyn Davis, uh, has GBI concluded their... She's okay. Has Attorney, Mar yes. Attorney Davis, yes. has, has the GBI... Can someone get the water from him? Water. I know, but can someone get him from him? She'll freak out. Can somebody get the water? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Thank you. Take her in the car, please. Everyone on Facebook.
book, uh, there is a minute here where we can tell you there has been a second death at the Rockdale County, Georgia jail. Uh, there is a news conference going on right now. We're taking a moment so some can get into the car uh, after drinking water who have been participating here. So right now we're looking at some of the officials and, and some of the speakers. Attorney Miley Davis is there, uh, the family of the second person that has died in the Rockdale County Jail. They're calling for action. They're saying that the chief jailer needs to be fired. And uh, we're going to keep you informed on all of this. Oh, let, let, I want it, let, let's, um, Amber Young is going to speak to Shali's best friend. Then, um, Brother Brantley from the NAACP has a, another announcement. And then we're going to, we're going to wrap up. Hello, my name is Amber Young. I'm the best friend of Shali Tilson, um, and co-business owner. We own a business together, Urban Perspective. I'm not going to speak too much because a lot of us already said but I just want to say that we are going to get justice for Shali at the end of the day. We are. I'm going to speak it into existence. Now, Nikki Weathersby, she needs to be gone at the end of the day. She needs to be gone. There is no reason why she is still being able to be looking over this jail with, with such neglect that she can do. Like, like um, Lawyer Davis said, this is criminal neglect for both families, not just our family for Shali Tilson, but also for Jamie's family. This is ridiculous. And this should not be another incident that happened like this ever, especially in this jail, in no jail, but especially in this jail. That's all I'm gonna say. Thank you. Please come out for the march and show your support as much as possible. We're putting on this march for a reason. We gotta get justice for both families. So please come out and support as much as you possibly can. Thank you. For the brand. Um, the question was asked, what can this community do? I think the whole state, the nation, all needs to come to Rockdale County. Um, as a president of this community, as a leader of this community, we invite the nation to come to Rockdale County. And as you guys come out to march, we also ask everybody to march in peace. And we march in peace, we get better result and justice for the whole community. Um, you know, and I made my first statement about this. You know, my biggest thing was this autopsy report. And when you look at this autopsy report, it's very disturbing. There's a lot of questions that has to be answered. And the community needs to know these answers. And the community has demanded that these answers, these questions be answered. And as a leader of this community, I will make sure that the Rockdale community get the answers, the family get the answers, and the nation get the answers. This right here cannot happen again. Be publicly right now, um, but you will hear from them at a later date as well, um, prior to the march, so that um, you can hear what they have had to go through and what their journey has been. Um, because as one mother cries in support of the other, um, this is a this is a, a very preventable situation. Um, it's, it's saddening to see. Uh, these mothers have to mourn in this way. So again, we thank you all. We thank the organizers. We know that they're going to um, be working together in, in, in coalition to, to bring about positive results and hopefully change for Rockdale County and around the country. Thank you very much. Thank you.